This is another poem with a lot of humor built into it, but with a serious point. Once again, it is a poem that is full of allusions. To get the humor and understand the underlying point, we need to understand the references. Let me rearrange the normal pattern and start with the subject and theme. Then we'll look at the poem. The subject is history, and the theme is this. Those who don't know the mistakes of the past are doomed to repeat them. Now let's look at the poem. Trying to protect his students' innocence, he told them the Ice Age was really just the Chilly Age, a period of a million years when everyone had to wear sweaters. Okay, this is funny. There's nothing much serious about it. A history teacher is trying to water down history to protect his students' innocence. We don't know a lot about life during the Ice Age, but we know enough to know that hu the humans who lived through it endured brutal conditions. The second little stanza is equally unserious. And the Stone Age became the Gravel Age, named after the long driveways of the time. But in the third stanza, the sauce begins to thicken a little bit. The Spanish Inquisition was nothing more than an outbreak of questions such as, How far is it from here to Madrid? What do you call the matador's hat? The word inquisition means two different things. Technically, an inquisition is an extended period of questioning. But the Spanish Inquisition refers to a historical period of religious persecution when many people were put to death for not adhering to the state-mandated religion. This occurred mostly in the 15th century, I think. It was a serious, ugly business that we can learn a lot of lessons from. But the teacher protects his students by not only telling them the dictionary, by only telling them the dictionary definition. It was an outbreak of questions. And note how silly and innocuous the questions are. How far is it from here to Madrid? What do you call a matador's hat? Now the two examples in the next stanza are even more troubling. The War of the Roses took place in a garden and the Enola Gay dropped one tiny atom on Japan. Well, the War of the Roses had nothing to do with roses. It was an English civil war between two branches of the royal family. The war got its name because one branch of the family used the red rose as part of the family emblem, and the other branch used the white rose. But the point is that this civil war caused widespread suffering among the English population for years. And then, of course, the Enola Gay was the plane that dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. It wasn't one tiny atom. Now, here is where the sauce thickens even more. The children would leave his classroom for the playground to torment the weak and the smart, mussing up their hair and breaking their glasses. History is a long story of fighting and discord and the strong dominating the weak. When those children go out to play, they are reenacting history in microcosm. The value of history is helping us to understand the mistakes of the past and the consequences of those mistakes. To the extent that we understand the mistakes of the past, we have a better chance of avoiding the same mistakes in the future. These children need to be taught the lessons of history. The teacher wants to protect their innocence, but we can tell from their behavior they aren't innocent. The teacher is protecting their ignorance, not their innocence. Well, that's a pretty dark, serious theme. 
but the poem ends with some more gentle humor. So the children are in the playground, mussing up their hair and breaking their glasses, while he, the history teacher, gathered up his notes and walked home, past flower beds and white picket fences, wondering if they would believe that soldiers in the Boer War told long, rambling stories designed to make the enemy nod off. Well, the Boer War occurred at the beginning of the 19th century. The Boers were in South Africa and they were rebelling against English rule. It's a footnote in most history books, but lots of people died and were displaced. The joke in this stanza is the word Boer. It's pronounced the same as Boer, B-O-R-E, as in boring. That's called a homophone, when two different words with different meanings are pronounced the same. So the teacher wonders if he could convince his students that the Boer War was the B-O-R-E War, where soldiers told long rambling stories designed to put the enemy to sleep. It's a historical joke. Once again, this is an example of Billy Collins using a lot of wry humor to make a serious point. <laughs> 